If you're trying to be more comfortable on your electric bike, you might be wondering if a suspension seat post is a good idea. And as you can see, I've tried a few different types and styles of suspension seat posts over the years. I do like some of them and I don't like some of them as much as others, but I'm gonna share five things in this video that I think you should definitely know before you buy one. Number one, there's a really wide range of prices for suspension seat posts. And like most things these days, you do get what you pay for to some degree. Now the cheaper suspension seat posts are going to look something like this. You can probably find them for well under the $50 range, maybe as low as $20 for some of the cheapest brands, which I might not recommend. But this suspension seat post has a design that simply goes up and down, which is not ideal. If you spend a little bit more, maybe around the $100 mark, you can find something like the Suntour NCX suspension seat post. And this is much better because instead of the seat post moving straight up and down, it actually moves in a curve down and back. Now you might be wondering why do you want it to move in that direction? But if you think about your tire rolling over an obstacle, it's not going to move straight up over and then back down. It just doesn't move that way. It's going to hit an obstacle and roll up and over, making kind of an arcing motion like this. So something like the Sun Tour suspension post is going to make an arc in the opposite direction. So it's really doing a good job of counteracting the action of you hitting a bump. And of course the prices don't stop there. You can go up to about $230 for something like the red shift suspension seat post. And then there are others that go up to $250 and more. And that kind of sums up my second point, which is not just price, but there are different types of suspension that can be used for these seat posts. I would do a little bit of research, find out what type you want, and then find something that's in your price range. Number three is seat post height. If you are riding a bike and you're at the limit of the seat height, not on the upper end, but down low, for example, if you have your seat lowered all the way down to where the post is just barely sticking out, you might not be able to use a suspension seat post. Maybe you have to trim your post down because of the type of frame you're using. This might not be an option for you either. You're always adding a little bit of height right here for the suspension mechanism. We have about the same amount of space required for the Sun Tour. Some of the suspension posts that simply go straight up and down might be a little bit tighter, but you're still gonna have to account for an extra inch or two. And the majority of these cannot be cut down. There are some brands where the suspension mechanism is completely at the top of the post, but for the most part, they have some adjustment at the bottoms. You can see that this one cannot be cut down either. And the same goes for the red shift. So none of the posts that I have here can be trimmed down. Number four, be aware that you might have to compromise a little bit. One of the most popular accessories that's included on the Bolton e-bikes Blackbird, for example, is a seat dropper. It allows the seat to be in a nice low position and with the push of a button, it can come up or the same thing, you can push the button and also move the seat back down. Because the dropping mechanism is built into the post itself, for most seat posts, you can't have both the suspension and the dropper. You kind of have to pick one or the other. Now there is one exception, and that is this seat dropper suspension post combination from PNW. There is an air valve right at the top here, so you can adjust how firm the suspension movement is, and then it has a separate up and down movement for the dropping function. But again, you have to make a slight compromise because this doesn't have the ideal back and forth movement on that curve that some of the other posts do. It seems like this can take out some of the really hard hits, but if you're looking for something comfortable that can take out a lot of small vibrations and bumps in the road, it's not gonna work as well. Now, I don't wanna scare you away from buying any one of these types of seat posts because there's a good chance these might work really well for you. The reason I put the Redshift suspension seat post on the Warthog behind me is because they actually sent that to me for review. Now, with all of those things said, I have to jump onto the final 
most important thing, number five, which is, would I buy one? The answer to that is absolutely. Now, I'm not particular or picky about which brand, although having ridden a few different ones, I am kind of partial to the Redshift. I like how it feels. The Sun Tour, I think, is very comparable in how it feels uh, at a cheaper price point. I have heard some people complain that they make some squeaky noises over time, and I think that's because of the more exposed design. There are some covers and different things you can get for this that would probably help, but the Redshift has this cool little thing right here. They call it a, a fender, which is kind of funny, but it's this little magnetic piece that pops off, and that actually hides all of the components and bearings so they don't get dust and mud straight from the rear wheel. I took some time to ride this bike around the parking lot, around the yard, going through gravel, over bumps, and I basically tried my best to hit every possible bump I could find and see how it felt sitting on the saddle. With a suspension seat post, you can actually stay seated more often and longer. Because when you get into little bumps and ruts and things, especially going onto single track type trails, you know, cobblestones, anything like that, you're gonna feel those vibrations. You're naturally going to lift off of the seat or stand up and pedal in those situations. But with a suspension seat post, you don't have to do that as often. There are different springs to adjust the stiffness of the suspension seat post on the Redshift, the Sun Tour, and most of the others. Uh, I did find that I liked the extra spring that's already included. That makes it a little bit stiffer, but I hit a bunch of bumps, like I said, and I didn't have to get off the saddle at all. I can really see how this would make a long ride more comfortable, and probably I'm going to hang onto the seat post and keep moving it around to whatever bike I'm riding. And if this is a specific product that you guys want to see me carry over at Bolton e-bikes, leave me a comment below. I already carry some of the Sun Tour suspension seat posts. We get those in on occasion. But if you're looking for an even higher quality version, uh, let me know if you'd like to see these on our website. Odds are, if you're watching this channel, you are interested in electric bikes. And if you don't know my seven things that you should know about electric bike chargers, then here is an oldie but a goodie.